This looks more complicated, I know. But now let's write the first principles that goes with this guy. Because this is the real function I'm interested in, not some random f, g, whatever. I want sine x. That's what I really want. Okay? Hmm. Limit. As I want the run to get really small, right? So what's the run in this case? It's 2h, yeah? Is that okay? I want it to get really small. What's the rise? Have a look. I'm not thinking about f as a general idea anymore. I'm thinking about a specific function. I'm thinking about this guy. So the first thing on my numerator will be sine of x plus h. Take away, what's the bottom part for the rise? Sine of x minus h. Are you okay with that? That's, that's the rise. Okay. What's the run? It's going to be 2h. We already worked that out. Okay. Now, oh, can you see yet? Do you see why I made this strangely complicated? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice. If, um, if 2h goes to 0, what does h go to? If 2h becomes 0, then h is also going to be 0, right? Do you agree with that? Like half of something really tiny, also something really tiny. So I'm just going to write limit as h approaches 0. Okay. Now, if you're a two-unit student, you don't know what to do with this because you're like, I haven't learnt anything that I can do to simplify that. But you are not two-unit students. You are extension one students. So you know you can do something with this, right? It's why we reviewed it at the beginning of this topic before your AP3s. What do I do with this? I can expand this. It's going to be sine x cos h plus... Yeah, you can write it. I, I tend to write the angles in order um, and keep them, but you can, it doesn't matter which way you switch it. I'm going to write cos x sine h. That's okay. I'm sort of out of space on my column here, so I'm going to be a bit naughty. I'm going to go into the next line. I'm going to minus this thing, right? What is this thing? It's very similar, isn't it? It starts the same way, but its only difference is... Are you okay with that? There's the numerator. That's, that whole thing is the numerator. Okay? The denominator hasn't changed. I haven't done anything to that because there's not much to do. Yeah? Are you okay with that? Oh, look, look. Do you see it yet? Has it collapsed in your brain yet? The reason why I went and made x plus h and x minus h is because, what's it called again when you have like surds like this? You want to, or you want to do something to the denominator. What do you do in this? You multiply by the, by the conjugate, right? Root five plus one. When you have conjugates, the reason why they just go together is because things just cancel out. What cancels out? Do you see it? Do you see it? this is the same as this? Do you see it? So it's gone, right? What do I get left with on the numerator? Hold on, I better. I better write that limit first. I've got this twice over, right? 2 cos x sine h. What's the denominator? Well, I'll get there in a second. What's the denominator? 2h. Okay. These two, will these two twos will cancel. They're gone. Now, this whole limit has to do with h, right? This whole limit has to do with h. So, what happens to cos x? This is not a trick question. What happens to cos x when h changes? But like, what does it care about the h? And the answer is, it doesn't care. It's independent of the h. Does that make sense? So therefore, I can take it out. Just like an integration, you're like, oh, there's a, there's a constant there. It's independent of what I'm integrating. So I'm going to factor that out. Yeah? And then I'm left with this in the limit. What's on the numerator? Sine h. On h. Now, do you remember we did that first graph underneath this heading and I said you must draw this in radians. Do you remember we said do it in radians? Don't think about it in degrees. Why? Why? What can I do with this if I'm in radians? In radians and radians only, that's one, right? If it's in degrees, you can try and put some values in here if your calculator is in degrees mode. You will not go to one, you'll go to some weird thing, 180 on pi or something like that, it doesn't work out. But in radians, I'm actually going to put a big note on that because you should too. In radians, that limit is 1. 
So at last, turns out our intuition, not so bad, huh? The derivative of sine x is cos x. Very nice. Now, I said we were going to focus on derivatives today, so we're not going to talk about the integrals of this yet. But from here, there are two other derivatives you can get quite easily, which are also just as important. Like sine's only one of the three main functions, right? So what are the other two? Let's do cos. Now, when you're trying to solve for something that you, um, you don't know about, right? The, one of the great mathematical strategies in all of maths is to turn something you don't know into something that looks like something you do know, right? So how could I turn a cosine into a sine? Do we know an identity that could help us with this? Think, think. You've actually got a few choices, right? You could use the Pythagorean identity, which is this one. It's not a bad idea because it has both of them in one line, but the problem with it is you don't just get sine, do you? You get sine squared, and then you, you introduce, you have to take square roots, and then you've got plus or minus, and then your brain starts hurting, right? Is there another identity that I can use that also connects sine and cos in an even simpler way? Without introducing any more functions, just sine and cos. What does the co in cosine stand for again? It stands for complementary. So what's cos x in terms of sine? What's the complement of x? It's, I'm in radians, I'm in radians. Isn't it pi on 2 minus x? That's the complement, isn't it? So could you, oh, do we have enough knowledge to deal with something like that? Now, admittedly, this is a bit tricky and a bit cruel to do to you after an exam review, but I think you can. This is chain rule, isn't it? Isn't this chain rule? There's a function of another function. What's the derivative of the inside? There's the inside. What's the derivative of this thing? Tell me what the derivative of pi on 2 is. It's just a number. What's the derivative of minus x? It's negative 1. That's the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the outside? It's, it's, it's cos, right? That should be times, right? Wait, 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 wait a second. <laughs> this is the complement, right? But so is this. So is this. So what is this going to be equal to? This is just going to be sine. If you can't remember that identity, if you'd like, you can go the long way around and you can say, I can do the same expansion here that I did over here, right? I can say, if I'm not content to just go from that line to that line, I can say, what's the identity for cos A minus B? Pretty sure it's cos A cos B. There's a minus there, so what's in the middle? Do you remember? It's a plus. And then it's sine A sine B. Do you remember that? Does it ring a bell? What's cos pi on 2? Sorry, pi on 2. That's 0. What's sine pi on 2? It's 1 which is what I said, okay? 